It is 4.30 in the morning. I've been up since 3.30 and these are the first words that I'm saying today. So my voice is probably really raspy. But I realize that maybe this is just more therapy for myself um, than anything. But I want to continue to do it and I completely missed this past weekend because I was too busy running around doing dumb things. Just nothing worth my time um Hillary had wanted to have Bloody Mary on Saturday and so we had that and my mom had Julian so we um had some cocktails there and then she brought him back and then we had some friends over um uh, which was good but still it just seemed like a waste of, of time um to an extent um, and whenever that happens that I feel like I'm doing something or wasting my time um, I think I get really down on myself and um, I get down on God and a lot of things y así pase mi vida I'm a little bilingual, so I'm going to try to add some Spanish to some of this. And once again, I'm just going to do one continuous take and record this as is. I'm not going to try to edit it or do anything much to it. If anything, just um, allow my thoughts for the day to come through. Um, I feel like I'm in a difficult season uh, of life right now and <clears throat> it seems like one challenge after another just keeps coming out and now I just feel down on myself down on my luck and as though everybody else around me is doing well and it sucks because i know in my heart that i'm coveting other people i'm coveting what they have i'm coveting what they're doing and i don't want to do that because when i look at my life and what god has blessed me with i have more than i could have ever imagined it's just maybe the people that i um happen to work with or happen to be with and be around with that I know it always seems as though they have it figured out or it's so easy for them. But I'm sure like anything, everybody has their own struggles with everything. Gosh, my voice is really raspy. Um, so I have this thing that when I'm down, I almost tell myself to just go through the motions, to just pray, to just worship God, to just read my Bible. And even if I don't think it's going to do anything, or if I think, think that it's for nothing, or I'm upset, or I don't think that he is there and he's not listening, I just... It's almost as I'm trying to convince myself to just do it. So to remind myself that he is there. Um, I've seen many of, seen, read, heard many uh, things about marriage and whatnot. And how love is it's a verb, it's an action, it's something that you do. Um, although there might be seasons of life where you don't feel love for your wife. If you do the actions or the things that made you fall in love with her to begin with like and you know i was specifically talking to men but diner take her out cook for her sit down with her talk to her um you know wine diner however that looked like for you when you were dating if you and i believe it's true because i feel like i've done it with hillary but if you do these things in your life in seasons when you don't feel like there's a lot of love you don't feel love, um, you can 
get that feeling of love again by just acting like a loving person towards somebody. And um, I hold that to be truth. But what I do and what has helped, I don't know if help me is the right word, but what I like to do is worship an eternal God, like I said. And so I pulled up some verses that um, seem to resonate with me as what I'm going through and what I try to do, even when I don't feel it. But in, in Psalm 34, when David um, changes his behavior before Abimelech, um, so that he thought he was just a crazy man. Um, David says that, well, and this is when he's running away from Saul, who is trying to kill him for no, no good reason, just because he's jealous of him. So at this point in David's life, he's almost as if he has done nothing wrong, nothing to be persecuted for, nothing to um, be being punished for. But he writes, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. And I wrote down that uh, the Bible doesn't use the word magnify a lot. I wrote that down. I probably heard it from somebody. I don't know how true that is. I guess I could have Googled it before this, but I believe in my notes. And then it says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. And again, this was just as he was going, as he was in the midst of it. Um, the other one. Uh, that I have written down here is Psalm 103.6. For some reason, I'm going to go Psalm 59 instead. So, uh, Psalm 103, 1-6, again, of David. Bless the Lord of my, o my soul. I know it's, it's a psalm. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord of my soul and forget not all his benefits, who forgives your iniquity, who heals your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. And I wrote next to... 103 1 and just a reminder to himself to bless the Lord to let that be his cry so if you read a lot of the Psalms most of the Psalms are written in times um, where David is going through a lot is a persecution for things he didn't do like from Saul and oftentimes things that he got himself um, cut up with like um when he um, sent to get, uh, oh my goodness. Now I, I'm going to need to try to find this. It's going to take me forever because I'm slow. Um, but just like when David goes and asks for Bathsheba. And he gets her, and he sins against her, and he gets her pregnant, and then she kill, and he kills her husband. Very bad things that David does, and he also writes about this because again, in the Bible, at no point does it say that God, that David was perfect, but he was a man after God's own heart. So when he sinned, he sought after the Lord, and he and he went to Him humbled himself and asked for um, forgiveness. And that was his, God was his power and his source. Um, so if you're ever feeling down or you don't feel like you meet a certain standard, um, 
something that I, I suggest you read Second Samuel and just realize how a flawed actually David was when you put it in the greater scheme of things and but how he lived his life continuously chasing after God and he never ran uh, ran from him but always ran to him that's something that I've tried to put into my life um, in Habakkuk 317 though the fig tree should not blossom nor fruit be on the vines the prod produce of the olive fail and the fields yield no food. The flock be cut off from the food, from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my mass, in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like deer's. He makes me tread on high places. 17, though nothing's going right, and there's no fruit in the vines, there's no olive, the yields are not feed, um, yielding no food, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. And literally rejoice in the Lord. Find joy in God. It's not just a simple um, statement, but actually finding rejoice, like a double um, dose of joy in Acts 16 25 26 if you've read the Bible um, or gone to church this is a uh, very uh, common use when it comes to, <clears throat> to praising God in the struggle but Paul is in jail with Silas for preaching the, the word of God and again there's not, nothing wrong nothing of his own doing um, but he can't stop preaching uh, about God and it says about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. So again, he was in jail. He had been jailed for preaching the gospel. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. If you just look at verse 26... Not um, so literally, literally. So obviously, you're not going to be in a in a jail in Rome. However, you may feel like you are in a prison of some sort of your sins, of your life, of your um, whatever that might be. Maybe you're unemployed. Maybe you um, are struggling with addiction. Um, some sort of sin that keeps entangling you and reeling you back and, and that is the jail that you feel you're you are in consider paul's strategy to just sing hymns and pray to god and give it to god and allow the allow god and his holy spirit and Resurrection, resurrection power that should be in you, which is not a crazy thought that I'm still working through, um, to shake the foundations of the prison and to set you free from that sin or whatever is entangling you. And then probably the most commonly used and heard of would be James 1 and 2, 1, 2, verses 2 through 4. And it even sucks to read because I don't know how to do it. But it says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Let its steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So we are to let the trials work in us, however that is, however God sees fit. And those first six verses, I have so many notes of what <laughs> and 
it's if out of verses in verses two through six, all of these know it's a, what those five verses mean to me, how I struggle with the thought of just letting the struggle grow me. <clears throat> but I can say that I'm still here. And I can, even though I feel that there's been more seasons of struggle than just seasons of joy and rejoicing and whatnot, I'm still here. Nothing has taken me down and I still get up at sometimes 3.30 in the morning, 4, 5, 6, whatever it may be before work and try to spend some time with God. Except when I'm out doing dumb stuff and watching YouTube videos and having drinks till you know, midnight, one o'clock in the morning. And then I don't get up in time for it like I did this weekend. And so a lot of what I'm feeling might be self-imposed. It might be what's going on around me. It might be my continuous struggle of where I am in life to where I feel other people are because I wasted so much of my 20s. And I continuously feel that I'm playing catch up. That's what I felt this morning. So, future me, be encouraged that at some point in the future you're watching this and you made it through this season. And you made it by continuing to read your Bible and worshiping God the whole way to work and worshiping the whole Jesus the whole way home. Remember that.